Can't you read signs? Sleeping again? How many times do I have to tell you? You have told me about 4,000 times already. I'm surprised you weren't in the coffin. I couldn't have a customer. Oh, so you remembered. Of course I remembered. I was going to get up in a couple of minutes anyway. All I got to do now is wheel them up, show them to the boarders. You got my frock coat pressed? Yeah. I pressed it. It's Manny. Who is Celia Hooper? Don't know the name. Then maybe you can recognize the face. Where'd you find this? In your pocket. Well, I can explain. Yeah, I'll bet you can. But you don't need to. I read her letter. Give me oh, that. no, you don't. It's evidence. Evidence? All the proof I need. You miserable little worm. Writing that poor, sweet, innocent young girl through a matrimonial bureau. Telling her what a gay, handsome young bachelor you are. And you married to me for 15 years. Abby, I was going to tell you all about it. Honestly, yeah. I went... Tell me what? That you meant to go out west and marry up with her? That letter says there's money in the family. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, you can just tell it to the district attorney. District attorney, Abby, you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. Carl Summers, you're going to pay for this for the rest of your life. We'll see just how much peace you get from now on. Now, what did you do that for? You give me no choice. Carl! Carl! If I can't rest in peace, you will. Carl! to my little hideaway in suburbia. A cheerful community, don't you think? And so friendly. So friendly indeed that this week the slogan of the Chamber of Commerce is take a cadaver to lunch. Yes, it's a place where a man can really bury himself in his work. Actually, I've been digging into the plot for a story which we are about to... Uh, undertake this evening. The title is Till Death Do Us Part. It's a grave tale in which not everything is on the surface. Ah, oh, forgive me. I'm being cryptic and I should be introducing our distinguished players. And they are Henry Jones, Rita Shaw, Edgar Buchanan, Philip Ober, and Jocelyn Brando. Sure as my name is Boris Karloff, you're about to vault into an hour of rigorous chills mixed with equal parts of rigor for And if you're easily alarmed, it's your own funeral. <laughs>
ready this ladder for me, I'd be much obliged. Be proud to. You're new in town, ain't you? That's right. Carl Summers is my name. Jerry Flagg. Uh, pleased to meet up with you. Say, you know a family named Hooper lives here? Hooper? Well, they own half the town. Well, that's interesting. You see that house up there? That's the Hooper house. Does uh, Celia Hooper live there? And her brother, Elmer. Pretty fancy, huh? If you just hand me that sign. Oh, sure thing. Huh? Hey. Here you go. Talk going around town, you're opening a business. Uh-huh. You no. Know, I always wanted to get situated in a business myself. You uh gonna need an assistant? As a matter of fact, I will. Can you drive a team? Shucks, I was born in a livery stable. Handle a shovel? Lived in a stable, too. Uh, what kind of business you going into? Undertaker? There's a great future in it for us both. Well, I don't know. What's that? Just got our first customer. It is. Yeah. Sure is hard work. Good for you. Nothing like digging graves to keep a man healthy. You sure got lots of flowers. Gals over at the saloon sent them over. Forget me nots. Well, <laughs> he won't need these. Where he's gone, they'd only wilt. Mother of Miss Celia Hooper. Oh, I'm her sister-in-law. Oh. Well, would you tell her Mr. Summers is calling? Mr. Carl Summers? Uh-huh. From St. Louis? Oh, come right in. I'll fetch her. to my parlor. Well, it doesn't do you justice. Oh, that's what everyone says. 
course, it was taken several years ago. A few. A present. Just a little something I picked up on the way over. Forget me nots. How appropriate. There are more where those came from. I just love flowers. Uh, won't you sit down, Carl? Thank you. I can call you Carl, can't I? Seeing as how we're engaged and all. Of course. Oh, this is so wonderful. All my life I've dreamed of the day when my prince would come along. You've no idea how long I've waited. Well, I, I can imagine. You see, I've never been engaged before. Elmer didn't approve. Elmer? My brother. He's been looking after things ever since Daddy passed away. I don't know anything about them. silly old banks and stocks and bonds and gold mines. Gold mines? You'll have to ask Elmer about that. Well, that's... He uh, and Myrtle will be down any minute. Very in interesting. We're just one big happy family. Gold mines. <clears throat> Oh, Elmer, I want you to meet Mr. Summers. How do you do, sir? Well, I sure am pleased to meet you. I've been hearing some wonderful things. Have you? We've heard a lot of good things about you, too, Mr. Summers. Celia read us your letters. Oh, not all of them, Carl. <laughs> I understand you're a southern planter. Well, in a manner of speaking, yes. You see, I'm an undertaker from St. Louis. <laughs> An undertaker? Yes. It's a joke, you see. St. Louis is in the South, and I sure have planted a lot of people. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I hear you've already started up in business here. Well, yes. Uh, we had our first client yesterday. Ah, yes, that thieving gambler, Benton. Well, you can't expect many more such customers. This is a respectable community. Oh, yes, we haven't had a lynching all year. Oh, don't you worry. I'm sure Carl's going to be very successful just as soon as we're married. <clears throat> Celia. We'll discuss this later. Have you had supper yet, sir? Why, no, I haven't. Then I advise you to go home and eat it. Oh, my dear. See ya. Later. You must pay any attention to Elmer. He's always worrying about fortune hunters trying to sweep me off my feet. But don't you worry. He'll come round. See ya. I must go now. Bye. Oh, no. Not goodbye. Au revoir. See ya. Yeah, 50-50, you said. Well, now, the county paid us $100 for the funeral today. We we're paying out $100 in bills and splitting the rest. 50-50 or nothing is nothing. Don't you have any money of your own? At the moment, no. Well, then how are we going to live? Food will be gone in a week. Now we got horses to feed. I thought you said there's such a great future to this undertaken. It's the only way. There's a future in undertaking, Jerry. Beginning tomorrow. We won't ever have to worry about money again. I am making a great sacrifice. But I guess it's worth it.
After you pay them bills, I want you to take this to the Hooper house and give it to Miss Celia. Don't let nobody see you. You got that straight? I reckon so. Go ahead. But I still don't see how you it's You will, Jerry. You will. Gave me a start. That's just what we need, a start. Nobody saw you. No, Elman and Myrtle are playing hymns in the parlor. As soon as I got your note, I said I was going to my room. I told them I had a headache. It's Elmer's gonna have the headache when he finds out we're eloping. Come on. We're not going to elope in that. Why not? We're only going to the next town. But riding in a hearse. You'll get used to it. In you go. That's better than a bumpy old carriage. Take the ladder. Cheer up. Remember, you're starting a new life. Supposed to get over it, it's permanent. I never thought I'd see the day. Imagine watching my very own husband shaving. You get used to it. Do it every morning. Only after this, I'll be shaving in the bathroom. I hear you got running water at your house. My house? Huh. But, Carl, I don't have any house. It's Elmer's house, really. You see, everything's in his name. You mean the money and the stocks and the bank and everything? Elmer insisted on it. I guess he felt it gave him sort of a hold over me. He said if I ever married without his say-so, he'd turn me out. Turn you out? Oh, that doesn't matter, does it, darling? We still have each other. Yeah. Who wants his old money, anyway? We'll just go and live at your place. You know, I'm just dying to see what it's like. Carl Summers, you can't do anything right. We all make mistakes. Never knew anybody to complain so much before. Well, what do you expect? Six months in this town, not one funeral. Other towns have shootings, stabbings, pretty near every day. Here we get nothing. Must be a jinx on the place. Elmer's doing fine here. Bankers never starve. Make as much money as bartenders. <laughs> oh, no, Carl. 
Bartenders will always make more money, just as long as you're around. Don't start that again, just because I ain't a mealy mouth blue nose like that brother of yours. Now, who could that be? Perhaps you have a customer. My customers don't make any noise. Come in. It's Elmer. Celia, it's so good to see you. Good evening, sir. Won't you sit down? Uh, sorry, we can only stay a moment. I suppose you're on your way to foreclose a mortgage. Uh, very amusing. Actually, we're on our way to see the doctor. Doctor? What doctor? There's a doctor in town? Dr. O'Connor. He's a famous specialist from way back east. Omaha, I think. They say he can cure everything. Hogwash. Oh, he's very good for animals, too. Elmer's promised to take me down to his office for consultation. It's free. Why don't you folks come along? Oh, I'm sorry, but we're, we're both rather tired. We, we've been so busy. Come along, Myrtle. We mustn't keep these good people from their rest. Now you take care. Oh, don't worry. Good night, brother dear. Good night, Celia. Don't be discouraged. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Do you see the look on his face? I've buried people who are more alive than he is. I'm sure he means well. At least he did pay us a visit. Sure, after six months. And you know why, don't you? To rub it in about there being a doctor in town. A doctor. That's all I need. Maybe you do. And just where do you think you're going? Answer me, are you going to see that doctor? There is another kind of medicine I need. Hey, don't you think you've had enough? No. That's the trouble. I never had enough of anything. Not enough of this. Not enough money. Not enough of you. Love's old sweet song. Sick of hearing. Ah, you know how I feel about you, Bonnie. If I couldn't have met you here these past six months, I don't think I could have stood it. Same old tune, night after night. It's always off key. Bonnie, I'm not like the others that come here. Of course not. I know the lyrics by heart. Too much wife, not enough money. You don't understand. I'm in love with you. That's the chorus, isn't it? I'm in love with you. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could go away together? And then back we go. Too much wife, not enough money. But I mean it. To me, you're not just a dance hall girl. Dance hall girl? Well, isn't that a charming, innocent little phrase? Well, we both know what you mean by that, don't we? When you're through with all this whining and self-pity, you're gonna go back to that wife of yours. Oh, listen to me, buddy. Not until you learn another song. Stand back, everybody. Give me a hand, guitar. Let's get him on the bar, man. What happened, Marshal? Uh, caught this galoot just as he was fixing to leave town. Leave town? Well, what's wrong with that? Uh, nothing, except uh, he was riding my horse. Did you kill him? I'll know in a minute. Sent Curly to fix the dock. Marshal! It's all right, Marshal. I brought him. Evening, everybody. Step back with you, please, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the verdict, Doc? Just as I thought, I've got the wrong patient. Wrong patient? You're the one I should be treating. Me? 
There isn't a bullet mark on this man. Missed him with every shot. You need glasses, Marshal. Well, then what... What's the matter this fellow, Doc? Nothing. He just fainted. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. I'm going to give you plenty of time to draw out. All right, drink for my friends. Drink for everybody. Carl, what's wrong with you? Excuse me, Dr. O'Connor. My name is Carl Summers. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Would you care for a little refreshment? You know, as soon as you came in here, I had the feeling I'd seen you someplace before. Funny. I don't place you. You ever been to St. Louis? Sorry, I'm from the West. Must be mistaken, but I could have... Sworn. Here's to your good health, sir. Here's to everybody's good health. Well, what do you suppose the matter with him? M maybe he didn't like your toast. You see, he's the town undertaker. Undertaker? Yeah, and his business is pretty dead. <laughs> <laughs> banging around here in the showroom at this time of night. I'm looking for that undertaking journal I got last month, The Embalmer's Life. For <laughs> sakes, that all's in the top right-hand drawer where I put it. Oh. Now, what on earth do you need that for? I'm warning you, you better settle down to business. This is business. Well, cheer up, my dear. From now on, we do not have a thing to worry about. Sixteen precious ounces of health, wealth, and happiness in that bottle. It's an old formula of the way Oigo Indian. Yeah, but are you sure it'll grow hair? <laughs> My boy, did you ever see a bald-headed Indian? <laughs> now, don't waste it all on your scalp. Remember, you want to get rid of them saddle blisters, too. <laughs> Mr. Summers, you've been waiting long? Just got here. Yeah. Step in my office. You want to sit down? No, thanks. I'm just on my way over to the marshal's office. Yeah, what's the trouble? Well, everything's fine with me. It's you got the trouble, Dr. Manning. Manning? I thought I recognized you and I was right. I found the whole story right in here. Name, picture, everything right there. What are you going to do? Told you. Going to visit the marshal. Won't he be surprised to find out you're really a horse doctor instead of an MD? So what? No crime against a man doctoring horses, is it? Seems I have heard it's a crime to go around poisoning people. I didn't do it. Man came to me with an old horse. He wanted some stuff to put it out of its misery. How do I know his old grandpop was going to drink it by mistake? Don't ask me. Ask the marshal. How much you figure the marshal pay for that newspaper? 
nothing, I suppose. Then why don't you sell it to me? That's better. You and I will make a little deal between us. $500, Bunny. You really meant it? About the two of us going away together? Well, of course I meant it. Listen, you and me are going to drive over this whirling junction and take the first train clear to Arizona. Sure. With that wife of yours standing on the platform waving goodbye to us with her handkerchief. Oh, don't be that way, Bonnie. Listen, my wife is never going to know a thing about it. <laughs> innocent with me, Carl Summers. I know why you've been going to that filthy saloon night after night. I just go over there for a couple of drinks, that's all. Mm. Who serves them to you? That girlfriend of yours? That's a lie. Who told you? Never you mind. But I got all the proof I need. So don't try any funny business, you hear? From now on, you stay out of that saloon. All right, all right. I'm warning you, keep away from that girl. By the way, if the two of you have any fancy notion about running off together, just forget it. Because I'll send the law after you so fast it'll make your head swim. Where do you think you're going? To that saloon? No, I'm not going to the saloon. Just going to put something away. Sorry, not another dime. But I don't want money, Doc. It's something else. Sit down. I take it this is a professional consultation, my friend. That's right, professional. What seems to be the trouble? Well, there's nothing the matter with me. Hmm? No, uh, you remember this afternoon telling me about this uh, stuff you sold that fella for his horse and his grandpa drank it by mistake? Yeah, I remember. Well, I, I was just wondering if maybe you still didn't have some of that stuff lying around. You don't leave it lying around. Not that stuff. It's deadly poison. But you do have some. There's a little left. A few drops in the bottle. Be enough to do the job, wouldn't it? Didn't know you had a sick horse. There's an old nag I'd like to get rid of. I see. Why don't you just use a gun? Too messy. You will let me have the stuff, won't you, Doc? For your horse. For my horse? I'd kind of like to have it tonight. I thought maybe if I got the job over with, nobody would have to know. I understand. There's just one thing. What's that? This medicine comes rather expensive. How much? Oh, shall we say... Uh, Five hundred dollars? Five hundred dollars? Everything has a value according to its need. Why, well, I spent five hundred dollars for a ten-cent newspaper only this afternoon. Service. 
Don't think you're fooling me. What do you mean? Well, I know. You're, you're just trying to butter me up because I found out about that girlfriend of yours. Oh, now, that's all over with. I told you. Just drink your coffee and forget it. Hmm. Too bitter? Too sweet. You loaded it with sugar. Well, sweets to the sweet, I will say. It's late. Come on, get ready for bed. Well, I think I'll sit up for a while. I don't feel very sleepy. Yeah, I do. I feel like I could sleep forever. You're telling me the truth about that girl. Of course I am. As I warn you, I'll never let you go. You and I are married. We're going to stay married. Till death do us part. Saloon. What? Now get up. The very idea sleep in the chair all night. See, dear. You feel all right? Well, of course I do. Now hurry up and get this fire started. I want to make a fresh pot of coffee. this morning. Seemed to be in an awful hurry. I knew your wife was going to go to the church picnic. Everyone did, except you. You've been holed up here all week. Well, I, I've been feeling bad. Yeah. Well, how do you think I felt, waiting for you to come and tell me when we were leaving? Well, I was going to explain. There's been a delay. You're telling me. You don't understand. My wife found out about us. We can't go now. She let me arrested. One might have known. No, Bonnie. Same old song. Be patient. Give me a little more time. I'll find a way. Honest, oh, I will. I'm sick of waiting. This is your last chance. Either we leave tomorrow, or forget it. Tomorrow? We can't. There's no way to get rid of her. Quick, out to the showroom. Well, I'm sorry. I was working out in the showroom. I didn't realize I had a glass. Never mind that now. What's the matter? Oh, it's Myrtle. Myrtle at the picnic just now. Oh, oh Carl, it was awful. Well, what about her? What happened? Well, well, there she was, just sitting there eating, and then all of a sudden she just keeled over. Elma said it was a heart attack. They're bringing her here now. Here? <laughs> she always wanted a real nice funeral. <laughs>
finished. Well, it's past midnight. I never knew you'd work this long on a casket before. Well, this job has to be perfect. Well, let me see. There. What do you think? Looks awful fancy. Satin lining and everything. Well, after all, it's for one of the family. I suppose you're right. Seems to me you made it awful deep. Yeah, I know. What's well, big enough for two? That's right. Big enough for two. First wife. Night, Celia. I hate to leave you. But it's getting late, and I I gotta get Myrtle in here right away because tomorrow is a mighty busy day. Say anything? No, he's new around here. When I told him it was Mrs. Celia Summers, he didn't bat an eye. Of course, I think the veil helped too. Good. Now we got our alibi. Won't people think it's funny your wife not waiting for Myrtle's funeral? I told them all the shock was so much for her house, she had to go to Arizona right away. Now, when I leave to join you, nobody will think anything. I'll just be going after my wife, that's all. Oh, I wish you were going with me now. So do I. But I gotta stay for the funeral. We don't want that psalm singing brother of hers to get suspicious. Hon, you're sure we're gonna be safe? Dead sure. could say, name your own poison. Didn't even need, Doc. My own way was better. Safer. Who's there? Who's there? See? Celia? Hmm. I forgot. You did. You thought I couldn't get rid of you, but I fooled you, didn't I? Carl! 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 What's the matter? 
that you, Marshal? Yeah. What's the matter, Carl? Well, nothing. I just broke a bottle. I guess I had a few. Can't say I blame you after the funeral, no? Yeah. Well, Myrtle and my wife is very close. Sure. Carl, I don't mean to bother you at a time like this, but seeing as you were so fond of Myrtle and all, maybe you can answer a few questions. Questions? Uh-huh. You don't happen to remember if Myrtle and her husband ever had any trouble between them, do you? Myrtle and Elmer? <laughs> I don't see how. You, you can't argue with Elmer. Well, now, I ain't so sure about that. Talks are going on that he and Myrtle had a lot of fights lately. What about? Flo, a dark-haired gal down at the saloon. Flo? And Elmer? <laughs> I don't believe it. Myrtle did. Been talking about seeing a lawyer. Sure never can tell what really goes on inside a man, or what he might do if he's pushed too far. But Elmer... Druggist over at Swirling Junction tells me Elmer bought some poison. Day before the picnic, before Myrtle died. You mean you think Elmer... Carter's coming over from the county seat tonight. So get your shovel. Shovel? That's right. We're gonna dig up the grave and take another good look at what's inside that coffin. <laughs> 